Hi, let's talk about the Hibernate. What is the difference between the Hibernate and JPA? JPA is a specification of the persistence API, while the Hibernate is only an implementation of the JPA. What are the advantages of Hibernate over JDBC? First of all, Hibernate uses persistence for saving and loading data from the database. It introduces caching, lazy loading, relationship management and provides code for mapping an object to the data. What is the session factory? First of all, let's look about the picture here. Here is the configuration for the database for the Hibernate. It is in the XML file, but remember that for the Spring Boot it can be done um, much easier using YML files. Here we have the mapping files between the objects and database tables. They can also be done uh, not only in XML files, but you can use annotations in your classes, in your entity classes. Here, basing on the configuration of the database, the factory, the session factory is produced. It is used, it is only one per application and is shared by all the application threads. It is used to get the session object. It can also provide some caching mechanism, which is also called the second level cache. It is also thread safe because it's shared between all the application threads. Let's look what is the session. Let's have a look at the, at the example which is on the previous, um, previous slide. The session is a bridge between the tables and the classes. As you can see here, it is produced from the session factory. It maintains a connection between the hybrid application and a database. It provides methods like uh, update, delete, fetch to store the data from the database, uh, such as persist, update, delete, load, get. It is a factory of query, criteria and transaction. It provides a factory methods to return these instances. What is the persistence context? A persistent context handles a set of entities which hold data to be persisted in the database. Here, as you can see, we have the entity manager, which introduces uh, the methods to, um, to update the data in the database. Here we have the persistent context with managed entities and uh, managed entities are just classes yeah, which are defined in the XML files on the or the, uh, by using by annotations. And here we have the database. So the persistent context is just a synchronizer object that tracks the state of the limited set of Java objects and makes sure that the changes of these objects are at the end put back into the database. A persistent context is like a cache which contains a set of persistent entities. So once the transaction is finished, all the objects are detached from the entity managers and uh, are no longer managed. What is automatic dirty checking in Hibernate? The automatic dirty checking feature of Hibernate calls update statements automatically on the objects that are modified in a transaction. So after changing the state, we are committing the transaction. In such a case, state will be updated automatically. Let's have a look at the example here. We have the session factory at the very beginning. Here we have a session which is the created based on the, from the factory. Here we have the transaction, begin, begin transaction from the session object. 
Uh, here is small mistake, it should be session one. Here we have the employee entity. So we take the employee data from the session one and uh, we want to get the ID number 101 of the employees. Here we have a change in the entity. We change the salary to 70,000. And at the end we have the commit of the transaction and we close the session. So here, after getting employee instance, we are changing the state of E1 object, entity object, which is populated into the database. What is the Hibernate life cycle? In the example here, the beginning starts with the configuration initialization on the XML, Hibernate CFG XML files. Then we have the session factory created. The session, based on using the factory, the transaction on the session is uh, created. Then we have the entity, some changes on the entity level, the session persistence, and the commit of the transaction and the closing of the session. What is the difference between get and load methods? First of all, we have two situations here. If you know that the object exists, and if you only as and the other situation is if you only want to assign a relationship ID, then use the load method. The load will throw an exception if the ID is not found. But load can return the proxy object, a placeholder which triggers the loading of the real object. And without hitting the database unless it is really required. Let's look at the example here. We have the session load of the student class with ID 101. So the request goes to Hibernate, which creates a proxy object, sets the ID to 101 and returns it to the client, to the object here. While as the second request, you want to assign the student and get the student ID. It also goes to the proxy and returns the, <clears throat> the ID of the student. But when you want to get when you want to get a property which is non-ID, you want to get a student name, the request goes to Hibernate and then the request is forwarded to the cache to check if the property is available. If it's not, the request goes to database and the value is stored back to the cache and then returned to the caller. If you are not sure about the existence of the object, the get will, <coughs> will be the best solution. Remember that get will return null if id is not found and always go to the database. What is transient persistence and detached state? The transient state is when the entity class is not associated with a Hibernate session, so there is no record in the database. Persistent is a state where the entity class associated with the Hibernate session, so the record is in the database, the ID is already given, and we are waiting for the commit of this <coughs> object to the database. The detached state is a situation if we close the session. We can still <coughs> modify this object and reattach it to the new session. That's it for part one. Thank you.